coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, we smile awkwardly and over-enunciate as we extol the virtues of Ring Fit Adventure. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. We've got a good show for you today. We are going to be talking about the news from the week, including that Ring Fit adventure. And then on Thursday, we are going to be ranking the overworlds from the Zelda series with special guest Matt Acevedo. But in the meantime, Mark, how are you? Patrick, I'm doing so good. And let me be the first person to tell you, yes, nice haircut. Thank you. You are not the first person oh, to tell me nice haircut. Darn it. I assume you just got newly shorn, like, right before we saw each other. Uh, see, th- this haircut, it is a Sunday, a rare Sunday record. This haircut is a Friday haircut. I also got a haircut on Friday. Hey, nice haircut. <laughs> let me not, let me be the first to <laughs> You actually probably told, are the first person <laughs> Let me be the first person nice to be haircut. told you got your haircut and then tell you you had a nice haircut. <laughs> this, both of these things are true. I've had it since Friday. Uh, very good. It looks good. Hey, we're Thank both you. looking good. We... Look. Yeah, it's really a shame this is not a video podcast. We're I'm looking o- our best. I'm okay with it. <laughs> uh, he, you know who else is looking his best? Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, baby. Uh, if you want to borrow my copy of Sonic Forces, you can. It came back to me. It's back in my possession. The p- system works. The system, I believe in people. All you got to do is uh, email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at gmail.com and send us a, you know, a mailing address, some place where we can send Sonic Forces, uh, presumably a place where there is or will be a Nintendo Switch so you can play it. Presumably where you will also be. Yes. You and either your Switch or a Switch that you have access to and are allowed to play on. <laughs> Ask your parents permission. That's right. Um, or don't if uh, you don't speak to your parents. I mean, some people have different situations. That's right. Um, something else you can do, as long as you got that email address, uh, you can make some Mario Maker 2 levels and send us the codes, maybe with a little description, to be like, here's one I made and I thought of you guys. Yeah, we love it. We love playing people's Super Mario Maker 2 levels. For me, it's a great reason to go back to that game. I still haven't finished the uh, like all the levels in the story mode. I built my castle, okay, yes. but there's like... Uh, Levels that I haven't played yet. Yeah, there. I've played all the levels, uh, and I've like, yeah, I guess that's it. It's just that you play them, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but I still don't have enough coins to finish the like diorama thing that you build to the left of the castle. Spoilers, I guess. <laughs> yeah, this is news to me. <laughs> yeah, it's a. Uh, it's just like a a, a collage when of like Mario up? items. Like I, you just like keep playing levels and eventually one of the toads is like hey get over (laughs) here yeah exactly (laughs) yeah that's basically it all right mark let's get into what we've been playing this week all right i've been playing some more fire emblem three houses how's that going for you it's going great i really love this game i finally caught the yellow fish for flame Finally! Yeah, it only took me going through all 50 of my tournament bait uh-huh. and then reloading the save file. No way. And getting like 15 in and finally it showed up. So that was a great day. Um, Does it increase the likelihood that you are catching the fish that she's interested in if you do it perfectly? Like if you do the, the rhythm game part of it perfectly? It's not really a rhythm, but... You no, know I mean? like really all you're waiting for, my understanding, all you're waiting for is... She wants the fish that is yellow, right? Because there's like the blue fish that's the smallest, the red fish, which means large fish, and then yellow, I guess, indicates like special or unique. Yeah. And I think as long as you capture that yellow fish, I do think that, you know how the fish, when you catch them, they have like catch meter, I guess, at the bottom. Yeah. And then if you're doing perfect, that winnows down faster. Yeah. So I think it has a very long catch meter. So if you didn't do perfect or great, like you would lose it. It is also my understanding that, like, the individual quality of, like, a fish isn't set the moment you hook it. Mm. That if you do, if you if it's, like, all perfect, that the quality of fish is... Oh, it's is... like a five-star fish. Yeah. So, like, a four-star fish. Exactly. Or I gotcha. Uh, so, I think I'm perilously close to the time jump, do you which know... I've been eagerly anticipating. Yeah. But I don't 
Uh, maybe I don't know. Should, maybe we should talk off mic about it. Maybe what? What do you know? What chapter number you're in? No, no you have I no. Don't. I, you have no idea. <laughs> How would I? I you don't have know. No idea. I don't know the on. name of the month. Like you know, they're all fake. Oh well, yeah, they're is all fake. fake months. But it says like <laughs> chapter eleven. <laughs> and then it I'm says, not at chapter eleven. Okay, I right. think I'm at chapter six. Oh, I I just you I, must be further than that. I okay. Let me tell you what I did. Okay. Uh, I just. <laughs> The last battle I fought uh-huh. was at the end of the month, and it was um, against, like, the three houses. Oh, you did the Battle of the Eagle and the Lion. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I just just finished the reprise of that, which is, like, it's, it's a fun thing when you do it. It's great. You didn't answer my question. Am I close? No. To the t- <laughs> no? Not, no? I'm not close to the time jump no, at all? I think, I think you may, in fact, be at, like, uh, chapter six, like you said. It's not, it doesn't happen until 12. Oh. <laughs> I put in like 15 hours into this game. What does it want for me? I've put like 44. <laughs> That's no, what it wants. I, I am loving it. I'm uh, eagerly looking forward to making more progress in that game. Speaking of specific numbers of hours that someone has poured into a game, uh, Tetris 99 has now officially become my most played game on Nintendo Switch. Congratulations with to Tetris 99. Yeah. <laughs> Just narrowly beating out Breath of the Wild, which is now uh, forever will be in second place. Um, yeah, and here's what keeps me coming back: those daily missions and those unlockable skins. Um, cause like I just, I just want to play. Look, I want to play the game where it's mashed up with Donkey Kong. I want to play the game where it's mashed up with Mario, with Zelda. I just want to keep coming. When back. I came over today, was it the Donkey Kong one that was up yeah. there? You guys, mm-hmm. are are you worried you're going to run out of unlockable skins? Yes. Um, we will. And actually, after after those three. Mario, Donkey Kong, and Zelda, they kind of suck. Um, like, they're not tied to specific old Nintendo games. They're like, this one is elegant, and this one is fancy, and this one is school. <laughs> elegant uh, and fancy? Yeah, right? Pick a lane. Like, <laughs> but also school. Like, well, who wants that? <laughs> um, so, yeah, th- I mean, we will reach a day, uh, and it'll be in just a couple weeks, uh, where we've earned enough tickets to buy all of them. And, you know, I mean, the, the game remains super fun. Um, I just got a win um, today before you came over. I was very excited about in that. In Invictus mode? Um, no. <laughs> Our highest in Invictus mode right now is fourth place. That's pretty good. Um, but that it's usually more like 47 or something. <laughs> um, so love that. Um, and then uh, my buddy Pete is in town. He's actually in the room as we're recording this right now. Um, and we played a little bit of the Capcom beat 'em up bundle. Um, this, uh, like yesterday, I guess. Um, and we played through Warriors of Fate, which has like a, a, a like a, a Japanese, like samurai vibe to it. Um, which was maybe, uh, the least fun I've had with one of these so far. It was fun to be playing with Pete and Sarah. Um, but like the actual game is maybe a little bit less, uh, imaginative and crazy than, uh, the, the bulk of these games. What era are these games from? Like it does a spur early nineties. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like I, all of them l- are like probably 89 ish is probably the earliest. So are these like 16 slash 32 bit looking sprites? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And like the warriors of fate has a very like, um, sort of rough 16 bit look to it. Um, we also played, um, final fight, which is a game that, uh, I've loved for a, a long time. And I didn't play it earlier because I was like, Oh, that's a game. I know, like, you know, I, I want to dig in and like kind of mess around with these, um, weirder games. Um, but final fight holds up. It's still a pretty cool game. Um, um, and, uh, yeah, it was just a, a, a lot of fun to run through it again. All right, so that's what we've been playing this week. Let's uh, check out the new releases and what we might be playing next week. Today, Tuesday, September, te- September 17th, Uh huh. Lego Jurassic World is released. You I, had highlighted this one. I highlighted this one mm-hmm. because I think the Lego games are, are worth mentioning um, whenever they pop up. A um, little bit bummed by a Jurassic World theme, but, you know, what are you going to do? Also, Castle Crashers Remastered is released for Switch. Uh-huh. On Thursday, September 19th, Devil May Cry 2 is released. And Puzzle Quest The Legend Returns. So it should be noted that Devil May Cry 2, again, is not a remaster or a remake. It is just Devil May Cry 2. And uh, the first Devil May Cry, that came out around E3 time. Like, that's past, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, which is, it, I mean, it's just a little bit of a weird uh, rollout. Like, why these games are coming to um, Switch is just a little confusing to me. Like, I think Capcom has just had a lot of success sure. bringing 
I, I mean, I think PS2 a lot of games. companies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, genuinely, I think a lot of companies have had success just porting their old games to Switch. Mm-hmm. And um, I think Capcom especially has found a lot of success there. That's basically what Capcom's Switch support is. It's just like bringing older games to the system. That's they don't a good really point. release new stuff. Or at least none of like the, you know, we've never seen a Resident Evil 7 or a Resident Evil 2 or any of that or stuff. Or like on Monster Switch. Hunter World. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I think that will continue to be kind of like Capcom's. Mega Man plan. 11, though. Right. <laughs> uh, and then Puzzle Quest The Legend Returns. So I've never played a Puzzle Quest game before. I've also never played a Puzzle Quest game. I know that they are well regarded as far as uh, like match three style puzzly games with are a concerned. more like story based RPG element to it, right? Yeah, that, I mean that is that is my understanding. Again, as someone who's not actually uh, played it, I just know it to be a uh, a, a well regarded puzzle game. And considering how much time I'm spending on Tetris, like I may as well just admit that I am into puzzle games and that like. This should be my jam, so I, I may check it out. Speaking of which, have you did you have you played any Puyo Puyo on the SNES? Oh, I Switch have Online? not. I sh- I totally should. I really have not um, messed around with the um, Super NES Switch Online. Uh, Pete and I were playing a little bit of it today. Um, I did poorly in F Zero, as is my want. Um, but yeah, I, I I really have to like commit some time to that thing. Puyo Puyo is fun. I. And I think I don't entirely understand the mechanics. Like, I need to look it up because I'm uh, playing on easy. Yeah. And the second, like, computer character you play against totally kicks my butt. <laughs> After, like, a minute and a half, I'm just totally dead. The The learning curve on Puyo is tough. Like, I, I feel like it's a little bit more unforgiving than the learning curve on Tetris. Um, like, Tetris, you can get steadily better kind of forever. Puyo, it takes a while before you're like, oh, I get it. Um, and cause it's all really about like chaining together. So like when you get rid of one clump of Puyo that that drops a green one from like the top to the bottom mm-hmm. and like sets off another chain reaction. Um, so like it, it does take a long time to like get your head in that space. And really Puyo Puyo Tetris was like the only way that I was ever going to learn how to play Puyo. Also the game is in Japanese, yeah. like all the text is in Japanese. Oh, so it's so, or the menus, <laughs> the menus are in Japanese. And yeah. so it's, um, I feel think I hazarded my way into where I should be as a beginner, but right. I'm well, who knows? not actually sure. Uh, also, Did we somehow move back into what we've been playing this week? <laughs> no, what happened? Not like, what haven't we been, been playing? <laughs> uh, also on the the 19th is Sayonara Wild Hearts. Oh, yeah. Which is like a rhythm game with a really cool aesthetic. I'm looking forward to this one. Mm-hmm. And then on Friday, it's a big week, the Nintendo Switch Lite is released. Outrageous. I can't believe this thing's already out. I know. I... I really want one of these, but I'm holding out for the You Know It's Coming Animal Crossing Special Edition. You know it's coming. So I'm just going to wait till March. My Mm -hmm. regular Switch is trucking along just fine. And then also on Friday, Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch is released on Switch. That's the first Nino Kuni game. Mm -hmm. And also The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. So excited for this. Oh my gosh. If anyone is buying this game physically... Or thinking about buying it physically, maybe do it at Target because you get a pair of like cool looking enamel pins. One is Link and the other one is Marin. Uh, or Marin. It's it's not it's not Mark Marin, right? Right. It's, it's not an enamel pin of WTF. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm I'm so excited for this. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And one thing I'm really excited about mm. is that this game is not very long. No. And so I feel like I can play this and continue to play Fire Emblem Three Houses. Because I know the Dragon Quest XI S is just looming a week a away. Week away. So oh my gosh. there's a lot going on right now. Another thing that's coming out on Friday is Untitled Goose Game. Yep. Which that looks like a lot one. of fun. And a bunch of Amiibo. The Link Amiibo from The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. And the Snake, Ivysaur, and Squirtle Amiibos from the Super Smash Brothers series. Yeah. It's a big... It's a big release day, and it is uh, a week after Daemon X Machina came out, and a week before uh, Dragon Quest Eleven S Echoes of an Elusive Age. Uh, 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 definitive edition. Definitive edition. Is it definitive? That's what it is? For Nintendo Switch. Yep. Uh, do you think you will be getting a Nintendo Switch Lite, even either now or in the future? Um, I think it is very possible in the future that we end up getting one. Um, it has happened now a few more times like that I've noticed where Sarah's playing Switch and I want to and I also want to play. Um, but like that's really the only scenario where two switches makes any sense to me. Um, but yeah, I think I think if it happens, it'll be down the line sometime. Yeah, because I mean, 
I really want one. I'm coveting one. But the other part of me that's like having it hold off a little bit. Thou shalt not. <laughs> is that <laughs> I'm just kind of like, what is the real use case for this? Yeah. And I, I don't really know at this point other than I just really want one. Right. I, I, yeah. I mean, that's uh, a lot of Nintendo things <laughs> for me, frankly. Um, all right. Let's get out of the new releases. Now it's time for a regular segment on the show. It's time for 433. In 1952, American composer John Cage wrote a piece called 433, wherein a performer or a group of performers didn't play their instruments for four minutes and 33 seconds. For the purposes of, purposes of this show, our instruments are talking about Nintendo. So for the duration of one performance of 433, Mark and I will talk about something not at all Nintendo related, thus fulfilling the contract of the piece. Today we're talking about appetizers. So the thing I like about appetizers at restaurants... Just jumping right in. Just jumping right in. <laughs> okay, yeah. The thing I like about appetizers at restaurants is it's just an excuse to order another entree. Uh, right? Because you're huh? like, well, okay, look, you <laughs> yeah. know, you're like with friends or whatever. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, what am I going to get for my meal? Well, I'm going to eat healthy, so I'm not going to get chicken tenders. But if I get chicken tenders as an appetizer, got it, got that's it, got the it. before the meal. Yeah, I mean, that that is a great point. Um, I... I feel like there aren't that many foods that double that can pull the double duty of appetizer and uh, main course, right? Like chicken fingers, yes. Uh huh. Maybe like maybe like ribs. some loaded nachos. Yeah, yeah, loaded nachos. Yeah, yeah. I guess that the list isn't very long. The list isn't very long, and it's not very because uh, like spinach dip. Right. Hard to pass that off as like a real meal. Yeah, and so um, two of the three examples that we gave there definitely have meat in them, right? Right. Um. So like for me, I don't now normally think of like I'm not gonna. I was at a restaurant with a uh, uh, previous guest, Colin J. Morris, um, who is also a vegetarian, and um, he was like, "I'm going, I'm going apps for dinner," um, and he got uh, a basket of jalapeno poppers. And some other thing that was, oh, and mozzarella sticks. <laughs> so he j he just ate fried cheese for dinner. <laughs> I have a really hard like a psychological block over doing apps for dinner for that reason, where I always feel like it's like this is not a real meal. Yeah, um, but even though you're getting like a calories worth of meal. Oh, totally. At least, uh, and like chicken fingers, I I used to do that. A meal's worth of calories, not a calories. A worth calories. Of meal. But, like, chicken fingers, for whatever reason, feels like a meal right. enough. I think it's brainwashing, right? Because mm -hmm. you, like, have chicken fingers as a kid, and you're like, I mean, yeah, what is the functional difference between getting chicken fingers for an appetizer or chicken fingers for the meal? There isn't one. Yeah. Yeah, there, there is none whatsoever. What is your favorite appetizer? Like, what is your Chips go and salsa. Ooh, chips and salsa. I don't know if that counts as an appetizer. I mean, but... it kind of does. Chips and salsa, like, but in that context where it is an appetizer, where you're at a sit-down uh, Mexican restaurant, mm -hmm. and they bring them out ahead of time. You didn't even realize they were coming, and you're like, I need to get a Coke, <laughs> right? I mean, you kind of realize they were coming, because it's table stakes for a sit-down Mexican restaurant. Right, 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 right. Um, that right Mexican restaurant would not be in business for very long. No, if they did not bring you. No, chips even if they're and, like, no. no, 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 we're an authentic Mexican restaurant. You know, we don't do that. That I don't think that would fly. Uh, yeah, but I mean, if you're I'm, trying to court white people, that would not fly. Well, no, white people demand it. Uh, it's just I was trying to make, draw the distinction between like a uh, a taco stand. Oh, sure. Which is, is yes, it going to bring uh, chips out to you like yeah. de, de facto? Uh -huh. Um, so here, uh, I I will level with you. I just made fun of Colin a little bit. I did have some of his jalapeno poppers, and I was so glad they were at the table because they're good. Jalapeno poppers are a jalapeno that has been stuffed with cheese and then breaded and deep fried. Yeah, and the okay. cheese is both like cream cheese and cheddar cheese. Oh. Um, and yeah, it's just like you got to watch out because those things are going to be tiny little volcanoes sometimes, and it, there's going to be hot cheese lava in there. Um, but like overall, like, it's a tasty bite. Well, see, I feel like I've kind of missed the boat on that kind of stuff, because I don't really like cheese that much. Mm. But, like, deep-fried zucchini, oh, I'm yeah. super into. Um, at Golden Road, and I'm sure at many places, but at a brewery that, that I, I go to sort of regularly, they've got, like, a uh, deep-fried avocado fry. Mm. Um, I like that a lot. Um, and, like, the variety of sauce, like, it'll work in different kinds of sauces, which I guess any fry will, right? You can really dip a fry in anything. Can't really think of a sauce. But like surprising that maybe maybe surprising you could do it with avocado. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. You don't <laughs> you don't need to salvage my comment. It's fine. But I'm trying. You don't, We're but, trying to resuscitate it. No, let it die, Mark. 
What about onion rings? How do you feel about onion rings? Don't You're not an onion I man. I feel I. Oh well. I guess, I guess we'll, we'll never know. <laughs> never know. Uh, we were accompanied today by pianist uh, G. Lu, and I think that's the first time we've used that recording. That excites me every time, and I never know if it's true. All right, Mark, let's get into the news. This is not really news, but I can't remember if we've discussed it before. Are you getting the Link Amiibo from The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening? So I do not currently have it pre-ordered, um, and I have the uh, Link's Awakening keychain from E3, mm. which looks very similar to it. It's pretty great. Um, so uh, I... It no is plans not, right now. Not currently my plan. Gotcha. That's correct. Okay. Um... All right. Oh, and second thing that's not really news, because we're about to talk about Ring Fit Adventure. Yes. And you know how you're doing that thing when you're, like, scanning and your brain says, oh, this is that word, but then you look at it closely, it's uh -huh. not? So in the context of Nintendo, I'm so used to seeing R, F, and A capitalized, talking about Reggie fils -A. Oh, my that's gosh. so many times <laughs> over the past few days as I've been, like, scanning through Twitter or uh -huh. something, and people are talking about uh, Ring Fit Adventure. Right. I like do a double take because I'm like, Reggie fils a -may? Reggie? All right, Mark, I'm going to do the music again. Let's get into the news. After a teaser video <laughs> into a new fitness-related peripheral <laughs> last week, mm -hmm. and, you know, we did a little speculation on what it may or may not be, turns out that we got a deeper look at Nintendo's latest weird thing, Ring Fit Adventure. Ring Fit Adventure. And really, kind of the weirdest thing about it was the video itself, I thought. Yeah, I mean, it, it, is, uh, it is on par with kind of normal modern Nintendo weirdness, right? Like, when, whenever they're trying to present you with a new idea, and they just, like, get a human being to, like, speak about it at the camera, it's weird. Mm -hmm. But this one was maybe exceptionally weird because of the two actors that it were... Just, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It felt very manufactured like very like stepfordy yeah oh totally stepfordy i imagine that when those actors were done they powered down <laughs> <laughs> their eyes just went dead and they... <laughs> but ring fit adventure itself is i don't know i'm actually pretty interested by this so it of course has the ring con mm -hmm. which is the like uh it's resistive like a rubber ring yeah oh, it's actually, like a I giant guess, pilates yeah ring. i guess i don't really know what it's made out of but you uh slot the right joy con into it and then it has a leg strap where you put your left Joy-Con into, and it's an like an adventure game, kind of seemingly RPG-ish. Yeah, it, it looks, and they sort of described it like a linear, turn-based RPG where all of your attacks are triggered by you doing exercises. Right, and to like move through the world, it's triggered through your emotion, mm -hmm. and the attacks and all that kind of stuff, there are different exercises you can do so there's some are very like yoga based some are like doing squats or like um making resistive like pumping no motions with your arms with right. the ring con so like um uh arm exercises leg exercises core and all of those um kind of act as different elemental attacks um so like the enemies that you encounter are weak to um certain kinds of you doing certain kinds of exercise um which is kind of a cool way to like gamify and like uh diversify your um workout yeah this definitely feels like an evolution of we fit yeah but making it more of a game which i felt like we fit you know never really even attempted to do well i mean we fit would allow you to it like made each individual activity a separate mini game mm -hmm. um but, like, is totally unsatisfying in that way, right? Like, the individual games aren't like, the, oh, that's a fun one that I want to play again. You know, it doesn't have that, like, kind of WarioWare snappiness to it. Um, but, I mean, I, I, I know that there are people that used um, the, the Wii Fit, like, regularly. So there must have been, like, some appeal about, like, just the regular check-in. For sure. And I, I don't know if it was just, like, a, a kind of, like, reminder to, like, weigh in and, like do some physical activity and then realize like, Oh, I'm going to need to do real exercise or this thing's going to call me fat next time I step <laughs> on it. I also think it's interesting. So this includes like a mini game mode and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so there's really like two parts of it to me. There's the, like the game itself, which seems to be very much like solo based and all about your ex like your personal progress and exercise and all that kind of stuff. And then there's also the mini game component of it. Where Nintendo's selling it more as, like, a party game. Yeah. Um, Which is what we saw in the first, like, teaser video. Right. Yeah. 
um, which that feels less like attractive to me. Totally. I feel like working out is embarrassing, right? Well, I also I just think it's interesting that they're being like, oh, these people are doing these mini games that you can do in the actual game itself. But when they're showing people playing the actual game, they're in like workout gear. Yeah. And when they're showing people do the mini games, they're wearing button downs <laughs> and like jeans, which I get because they're trying to say like, oh, you can do this anytime. But it, it doesn't feel that way to me like you actually would be able to yeah does it feel too intimate that you would be like sharing a not the the ring part is fine but the like thing that you Leg strap, strap so, on yeah. thing because it's like up on your thigh and then you're like here i'll just take it off and like hand it to my grandma it's gonna strap it to grandma's thigh well so that actually brings me to i guess my big concern about the whole thing is that all of this really requires accurate tracking yes right like accurate tracking of your motions and accurate tracking of like your poses and stuff like that. And it remains to be seen to me how well the Switch Joy-Cons are equipped for that. Totally. Because if you're trying to do, right, like even these let, Let's Dance games and things like that, when you're trying to accurately track motion with just like a gyroscope and maybe, you know, like an IR camera or whatever. Yeah, maybe, it just maybe feels, you're using the you know, IR camera. Really hit or miss. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how well it holds up there. I yeah. feel like that was one thing that the Wii Fit Balance Board for what it was, the exercises it was asking you to do, yeah. it was okay for, but it's even the same thing where you're like, look, this Joy-Con on my leg and me holding this ring isn't going to tell me if my form for this yoga pose is correct. Yeah. It's not going to tell me if I'm doing squats correctly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and like they have, um, it looks like even when you're in the RPG mode that there's sort of on-screen demonstrations of like how to do the form properly. So like it's telling you. So in that but you way, you just don't have anything to check again. There, yeah. You know, unless you're in like a mirrored studio or something. Right. You know, you don't have any way to actually see if you are doing proper form. Yeah, but I mean, it, in that case, it means it's no less feedback than like watching a workout video. That's true. Which I know. So this thing's like you know direct competition is Jane Fonda, I guess, from like 30 years Swing ago. To the oldies. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, so this is coming out on October 18th, um, and the price tag for this thing is 80 bucks. Which actually, I guess, is the price that Nintendo has been charging for That's its the weird Labo. like yeah. experiment stuff. But it seems reasonable to me. It feels. I mean, it's. I think it's reasonable, but it does feel high to me. Um, because like I can almost guarantee that the game itself is not going to be was not going to feel like a full $60 game, right? Um, if Because it, 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 see, it reads a little bit like it looks pretty. Like, I think the graphic style is uh, neat. Um, but, like, I can't imagine that the game, the RPG itself, is going to be something that I'm like, oh, I got to get back to the RPG. Yeah, no, I think uh, that's probably a good point. Um, so, like, if, if they brought that, or, like, considered that, like, a $40 price point game, and then the peripherals were another twenty bucks. And like if this thing came in at sixty, I feel like it would be a, a no not a no brainer, but like something that I would get excited about. The extra twenty bucks, eighty, uh that seems like everything is weird here, but that seems like a miss to me. I think the part oh unrelated to this, but one thing I also Do you want me to up think the music is again? <laughs> <laughs> well unrelated or related to Ring Fit Adventure, oh, unrelated to the price, is that one feature that they call out that I did like is if you live, you know, on like this uh, the upper floors of a building yeah. that there's, I can't remember what they call it, like silent, silent mode, mode or yeah. something, so you don't have to like stomp around yeah. in order well, to get it to trigger. I mean, it actually does seem like they are taking a lot of other things into consideration, like like the the, the silent mode. And also, like if you, are, if you don't have a lot of experience with uh, exercise or with fitness, that you can scale it down to be, you know, like less difficult, um, less physically difficult. Also, at one point in the video, I swear they were showing that like you can check your heartbeat rate by like holding onto the ring over like the Joy-Con. That's crazy. I know. So either I'm hallucinating or maybe you're hallucinating. I do. Possible. I do think they said that the uh, the ring con uh, is electric in some like it that it has some way of like feedback. Yeah, that there's technology in it. Um, so it's possible that it is uh, augmenting either the tracking or because yeah, otherwise how is the Joy-Con just by itself going to know how hard you're pushing on um, like the outsides of this ring? Yeah, the part that I'm curious about is Wii Fit was when Nintendo was in its blue ocean phase, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was very much like you don't have to play video games at all. This is just about fitness and like checking in every day and being centered and all that kind of stuff. Th this. Uh, Ring Fit Adventure is very much steering 
from what we've seen into like the video game part of it. Yeah. And so I mu- I wonder how much like the people who were interested in Wii Fit because it wasn't really a video game will be turned off by the fact that so much of this seems to be focused around like playing this game even though you don't have to right you can go but right into the exercises if you want i also think that like the landscape of people who play games has changed since the wii and wii fit that like that has introduced people more to um just like video games in general and then like that uh like rpgs and like triple a style gaming has become more popular sort of as a result of that and maybe even like mobile game has played mobile games have played a part in this where like yeah. people are used to apps where you are doing something else but it's gamified like duolingo or other stuff like that where it's like yeah. you're tracking some aspect of your health and you're closing rings and you get like rewards for doing it then maybe there is more like acceptance of that generally i don't know it's going to be super interesting yeah i mean just think about how like leveling up is like a it's like a common enough thing now that you can use it in like a business meeting and people understand what you mean um that like the fact that this is an rpg means it's not it's not like a super alien quality right um that that's just part of uh gaming and kind of just part of the culture now so yeah I, it'll be super very interesting to see how this all shakes out in a month <laughs> i know yeah that's right we already mentioned it, but it comes out on uh, october 18th how much uh lead time did we get before labo do you remember i think that was it- Labo came out on April 20th. Yeah, this is my... my Same day as God of War. My memory is that there was like a... Feb- it was actually similar to Ring Fit Adventure where there was like a direct in February. Right. And then a few days later, they dropped this trailer for Labo. And so I think it was like a little more time than this. I think it was like six weeks before. And this yeah. is, gives us about like four. Four weeks, yeah. Yeah. It is It is interesting. I, you got to love that Nintendo's like, hey, we've got a crazy idea and we are keeping it to ourselves for a long time. <laughs> in his column in Famitsu, Smash Brothers Ultimate Director Masahiro Sakurai discussed the process for developing DLC characters for the game. I can't believe he keeps writing this column. <laughs> <laughs> the man is too busy. He loves to work. He reiterated that Nintendo makes the final determination for which characters will get added to the lineup. So don't add him on Twitter, I guess. <laughs> We He got into some of his workflow process on Smash. Uh, first, he described himself as being spread thin and that he's not super deeply committed to working on a single character or issue during the game's development. Which uh, makes sense as he is the director and therefore manages a lot of people who are making uh, those decisions and all of that, like, you know, nitty gritty tweaking the, the characters and balancing them. He also said that he moves on to start new projects before old projects are finished. Is Okay. <laughs> Is that a good way to do things? I guess it's how I do things, too. <laughs> and I guess if you are, like, the leader, you are always yeah. looking to where things are going. That's true. You have and to then, drive things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he also uh, said that as long as he's working on Smash, he does not intend to take any big breaks. He's determined to kill himself for these games, is what I'm getting from But that. in a good way. <laughs> right. I mean, in a fun way, in a way that we're paying 30 bucks for five more characters. Yeah, and in a way where we're like, oh, look at him tired and chained to his desk and revealing, you know, how Kazooie's down B works. And he said that the ultimate goal is still far away, which implies much more DLC, right? I mean, yes. Uh, it, it also, yeah. I mean, th- again, he's working himself to death. Because one thing I thought was interesting is that when they announced that there is going to be more Smash characters coming or Smash DLC coming, they didn't like reveal another season pass or something that you could buy right. immediately they, they did not just... quantify it either right yeah. exactly so i don't know that they're necessarily putting a limit of like five more characters or it's just like smash ultimate really could persist it could outlive us all yeah well and one of the things i'm stealing from one of the bullet points on on our list here is that he uh said that he viewed the development of both <clears throat> of both Smash Ultimate and Smash 4 as sort of one long development cycle and that it is kind of like uh, he's treating it like an online game that it is a service that he is continuing to improve and add to um which is i mean consistent with what we've seen out of out of them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh he also mentioned that the DLC team is smaller than the main development team, so b- about 100 devs. Mhm. And uh even with the record-setting amount of content in Smash, Sakurai is interested in pushing for even more records. Um, so I, it, all, it all keeps coming back to the idea that uh, they'll never stop working on this game. 
and uh, we can continue to pay for it forever. I guess. I guess. Yeah, that's I mean, I'll do it. My read of it as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good game. Uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses version 1.0.2 released last week, which includes the new voice tracks for the English language male version of Byleth. Mm-hmm. And it also includes a new pair of glasses for Byleth. A new pair of glasses. A new type of attire for most students. Some items. Ooh. And some auxiliary battles. Also, the new Maddening Moan difficulty is available. Maddening Mode, which I guess that's above Lunatic, right? I, I lunatic th- Mode? I think so. I think Lunatic is you have uh, played Maddening Mode and you have been turned into a Lunatic because of it. So oh, you, weren't, wow. you weren't able to handle Maddening Mode. Do you wow. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that's the hierarchy of the madness there. That makes sense. It to tells me. a story. Um, uh, we're, did we talk about uh, why the why the male Byleth uh, English voice I actor? I don't think so. Um, so he was a uh, uh, or he had admitted to um like a, a some assault charges or something like that. Um, and so in a way was like, well, all right, just get rid of him and put a, a new actor in there. Yeah, I'm trying to recall. I'm, look, I'm only six chapters in, but I'm trying to recall when Byleth makes any... He doesn't talk. Yeah. Like, uh, there's, like, a lot of grunts, and, like, yeah, the, the character really doesn't speak, so... So it feels like an easy swap. It does feel like an easy swap, even though it's the main character. Hamster, the company that's responsible for the Arcade Archives series, announced at the Tokyo Game Show that another round of Arcade Classics is coming to Switch. Upcoming games include Time Tunnel, Scramble, Gold... TNK3. Sorry, that's a typo. It's golf. I'm sorry. Golf. <laughs> <laughs> I would just kept rolling with it. You're right. Not even thinking. I don't know what gold is, but here it is. <laughs> TNK3, In the Hunt versus Castlevania, and Datana, Twin B. Datana, two exclamation points. Why do video games have two exclamation points in them? Like Punch Out. Like Punch Out and Super Punch <laughs> Out. <laughs> um, yeah, so just, you know, if uh, those are the kind of games that you're into, uh, there are more of them on the way. In an interview with Gamer and translated by fansite Rockman Corner, Mega Man series producer Kahiro Tsuchiya? Tsuchiya? There we go. Sort of let slip that the next game for his team has already been decided and that it's a core Mega Man game. A core Mega Man so game. So we're going to get Mega Man 12 after all. Uh, Maybe not. Oh, okay. <laughs> so so he, he goes on to say, like, oh, and by the way, uh, when I say core, like, that could be, like, a- anything that, like, some people consider X the X series to be the core or like the EXE games to be the core or battle network or, or whatever. Um, so he kind of quickly threw water on the fire of like, you're making Mega Man 12. So it's another Mega Man game. Basically is it is another Mega Man game. He also uh, asked the interviewer to please wait for an official announcement, <laughs> which I thought was very cute. Uh, also Mega Man related. All of the games in the Mega Man zero ZX legacy collection that was announced last week is, they're all going to be on a single cartridge. Yeah, so a little bit of context for that is in the retail versions of the Mega Man Legacy Collection and Mega Man uh, X Legacy Collection, um, the first one is on the card, but the other, the second one needs to be downloaded, which is consistent with a lot of um, uh, Capcom uh, like collections, right? Uh, on and like, the... I think the Spyro Collection was like that as well. Like, I think it's yeah. fairly common in any of these collections. Right, because the larger um, Switch cards actually like cost more to produce. Right, and for a while were like prohibitively expensive. Yeah. But like, The Witcher is all on one cart, and Crazy. so that must be like a 32 gigabyte one. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming this is a 32 gig as well. So maybe the cost has come down to the point where companies are going to be doing this more regularly. Yeah, or it's also possible that there's enough like negative heat around it that. I mean, maybe, 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 maybe not. Um, but the uh, the Zero ZX Legacy Collection will have all six games on one uh, card, and there's no downloading necessary. Uh, the game will also include a Z Chaser mode, which is kind of like a speed run mode that lets you race against the block. Un- sorry, sorry, this is another typo. <laughs> Mark's not checking my typing uh, against the clock. <laughs> the clock, gotcha. The C and the B aren't even close to each other on the keyboard. <laughs> um. Another player in head-to-head online or an online leaderboard. Yep. Effective September 19th, which is a Thursday, or this Thursday, Bayonetta 1 and 2 will no longer be available on the Wii U eShop. If you've purchased them previously, you're, you'll obviously continue to be able to download them. But if you want to buy them now, you'll have to buy them on Switch. Yep. And that's it. Mark and I didn't much care for those games. Nope. The European Nintendo Twitter account revealed that starting October 1st, Nintendo Switch Online users 
will receive a discount when switching from individual memberships to a family membership. Do you think that is uh, like tied in with the Switch Lite? Like coming out that they're, they're I wonder if it's in like accordance with some European law oh. where they're like we're just going to um I'm blanking on the word but uh like depending on how much left you have in your subscription we will prorate prorate there it we go for your family membership uh yeah uh possibly but I, I I like that they're um like getting out in front of like they, since there are going to be more switches uh in, in the wild once the switch light is out and probably that those will be like filling slots in homes um mm-hmm. where oh people maybe are, yeah I like, see what you're saying because you, you buy it for your kid yeah when, like you don't want them to eat up all the all of your switch time playing uh Pokemon in November um that they can do that and you can keep playing. Uh, 185 hours of Tetris 99. Yeah, I see what you're saying. That does make a lot of sense. Um, but this is uh, that's the only news about we have about it right now. Whether that's happening in uh, North America, I guess, is kind of a question mark. And what exactly those discounts are, also kind of a question mark. So we don't normally report on release dates anymore because this isn't the first few months of the show. That's right. <laughs> Where we needed filler before the Switch was released. We didn't know how long the show needed to be. <laughs> uh, but we finally got a release date for Killer Queen Black. It's coming out on October 11th. I'm very excited so for this. So just another game to add to the October-September <laughs> pile. Another game that Mark and I will threaten to play together, but won't. <laughs> finally, uh, we have some more details about what to expect from Super Nintendo World. Coming to Universal Studios Japan Let's do it. next spring. Mm-hmm. Um, Universal Parks and Resorts Chairman... And CEO Tom Williams spoke with Bank of America Merrill Lynch and said the following bits of information. We got official confirmation that a Mario Kart ride and a Yoshi ride will be the two rides in the land. Really leaning into the uh, the uh, like Mario side of it here. Exactly. Because uh, he talked about, you know, there's going to be shops and restaurants and everything. And some of the big features are Peach's Castle. And then there's also a Bowser area. From some of the leaks, we've seen that like Bowser's Castle is where you enter the Mario Kart ride. Great. Um, and then he also talked about some interactivity within the land. So guests will have magnetic wristbands that have a big red Mario symbol on it. It, uh, the way he was describing it, it reminded me of those like slap ra- bracelets. Yeah. Um, but it but will. But with like an NFC. Yeah, chip exactly. In them. Because it'll allow you to like keep score and play with the various games that are available in the land and i'm assuming also probably with maybe like the mario kart stuff there's going to be some sort of like high score the other thing that i thought was really interesting is that it will also allow you to like sync back to i think he just said your game console which i'm assuming is like the switch so that there's going to be some sort of maybe leaderboard or score cape keeping capabilities within like the nintendo switch as well whoa I had not stopped to consider that there would be some sort of like functionality with your Switch, but that's interesting. Which seems really cool. I wonder if it'll be like a app that you download to the Switch, or if it'll just be yeah. as part of an update to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe or something like that. Yeah, that it'd be like game specific. Um, how are we getting to Japan? <laughs> I'm super excited for this. Uh-huh. Uh, it opens spring next year in Japan. They are also building one that they haven't officially announced at, or I guess they've announced that it's coming to Universal Studios Hollywood and Universal Studios Orlando, but they haven't officially announced opening dates for those. Um, But if you go to Universal Studios Hollywood now, down on like the lower lot where the Transformers ride and the Jurassic World ride is, you can see like uh, it's huge, like and really tall. The construction going on there. Um, Yeah, I totally think we need to go to Japan. I think we need to go to Japan. So like Kickstarter. Would anyone give us money on Kickstarter to get us to Japan? The other thing Would that happen? <laughs> the other thing that I thought was interesting is he just remarked that the the place that they're not rolling it out yet is at the currently under construction Universal Studios Beijing. He specifically says that like Japanese properties don't necessarily do all that well in China. There's oh. still some like long-standing tension there. So. But uh, it's it's Nintendo, man. Didn't the Switch just come out in? It hasn't Oregon? come out it's yet. It's coming out soon. Um, yeah. We don't have like dates or anything, but that's also in uh, like cooperation with Tencent with like a large Chinese company. Yeah. So okay, we don't fair. really, I don't think we know necessarily what the branding or how that's going to be positioned. You yet. think it's going to be so. Tencent presents Switch? <laughs> All right, Mark, let's get out of the news. 
Okay, that is going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Remember, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. If you like this episode, you could share it with someone. You know at least one person. Your mom, for example. Your best friend. Your best friend's mom. Tell them about this show. It helps us tremendously. Or you can do it on Facebook or Twitter. On Twitter, you can follow us. I'm at Patrick underscore Ellers. Mark is at MKE Mitchell. And the show is at Nin Cart Society. And we also have a Facebook page, which is just Nintendo Cartridge Society. Olivia Duncan made our logo. Our theme music is provided by 8-Bit Betty. You can get more of 8-Bit Betty's music by going to 8BitBetty.com or by listening right now. From my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Ellers saying silent mode. And thanks for listening. Hi, I'm Holly Laurent, and I have an improvised podcast called Mega, where my co-host Greg Hess and I play characters working at a fictitious mega church. Each episode features a guest comic playing characters who are part of our church staff or community. You can find us on Campfire Media or wherever you get your podcasts. Check us out. Church is about to get a whole lot funnier. Campfire.